All right, so um, one of the first books that I recently got, which I haven't posted about yet, is this book of virtues for young people. Um, there's a couple of different versions of this book. This is the um, original older version, and the reason I wanted to get this one is because there is a 25th anniversary edition, which is updated with things about September 11th and other things, um, and I was more interested in this older version. So this is... Um, one of the stories in here is assigned in one of the Waldorf either curriculums. I don't think it's a curriculum. I think it's one of the idea pages I showed you, I think in my fifth grade, um, curriculum hall, if you want to see what I'm talking about. And so it's kind of like a morality book. Um, this is the stories that are included and it's under which, uh, character traits. So like self-discipline, compassion, responsibility, friendship, work, courage, perseverance, honesty, faith, oh, and loyalty. And the one that is assigned is um, by Tolstoy. And so it's a story. This is um, kind of like has religious connotations, but it's under compassion. So, you know, if you want to use that or not, depending, um, we're not Christian and I'm still using it. Um, for a couple different reasons, but anyway, so this is one of the books that I plan to use, and um, there is a children's version which has more simplified versions of these stories. We, I checked all the different versions out from the library before I decided to buy one, um, and I'm just hoping to use this like loop through it with my second and fifth graders in addition to specific stories that, um, that specific one. Um, this book's by Betty Staley. She is a master Waldorf teacher. She's been in the classroom for 50 years. I posted about this one on Instagram. Um, but this book is about this age group, uh, and just different considerations and things to think about. It's, it's specifically written for people who are in the classroom and dealing with other people's kids in terms of, you know, the issues that are covered here. But I think that there's a lot that's relevant um, to me. And actually, I've found a lot of overlap with this and the lollipop book I shared in my homeschooling books, uh, homeschooling books you need in your life uh, video if you want to see what I'm talking about. And so that kind of makes sense. You have people that are writing from a different perspective and different experiences, but it's the same age group. So there's a lot of commonality. So this is a book I'm reading two. Um, and then the other book that I'm reading also by Betty Staley, um, she helped found the Sacramento Waldorf High School. And so this book is about how to make a lesson block, main lesson block about Russian literature. And, um, this is the sections in here. So this is kind of where I started with. Now we did do a Russian studies unit or not unit, um, just a Russian studies year last year with various things. Um, but it was kind of like different books, like geography, history, literature, um, all these different things spread out throughout the year. And so now I'm just thinking about focusing specifically on Russian literature for my rising junior slash senior, um, as well as just an interest in teaching this in general. I'm kind of trying to see if I'm going to be entering into a co-op type of phase of life. Um, and if so, this is one of the topics that I would like to teach. So, um, I've also posted on Instagram about different classes and things I'm looking at. Um, if you want to see like a more day-to-day -day update of what's going on with me, um, you should definitely check me out there. It's the same name as this channel. Anyway, so I posted about this a little bit and I've started getting books that go with it. So this is one that is cited to in the Betty Staley. It's, this is the same author as this book in case you're like, are you saying the same name? Yes. Um, there's a couple of quotes in that book from this book. And so it's a, like a coffee table picture book where it shows you a scene from Russia. And then there's like a quote that goes along with it. Um, so let me just find one. This is all the intro. So here is like, for example, a panorama of Moscow written in 1834. And here's a picture of Moscow, or here's a picture of a courtyard in Yaroslavl. And then here is a, um, quote from Gorky. So I thought this would be interesting to use for like background knowledge. And there's a lot of stuff about like nature and trees and connection, um, between Russians and Mother Earth 
that Betty Staley talks about. And so I thought it would be cool to have these different pictures of what people would be looking at in like authors in Russia when they're writing, you know, like what they're experiencing. And I thought it would also just be kind of like a visual um, tool I could use with my younger kids. So that's that book. And I got this used on Amazon for like $5. So if you're interested in this book, um, there are used copies floating around. Uh, and so then I got this penguin book of Russian poetry. There's a lot of different options out there. Um, I found some cool ones on, um, thrift books as well, but they were like expensive because there's not that many copies. So I thought that this one might work. Um, and it had good reviews, although some criticized the translation, but, um, and this is written from the 18th century and these are the different, uh, authors in here. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to use this, but I wanted to um, get my hands on it and kind of flip through it. And maybe I would, what I would do would be assign some of these for reading. Um, and there are poems included in, the, in this book. Uh, she recommends which poems to use, and I think all of them are in there. But I also just wanted to have this on hand. Um, for my own purposes. And then this is one of the first titles I ordered. I'm going to be reading it. It sounds kind of like a dystopian style, but it is not dystopian. It's just a novel. Um, and actually, there's another book I'm going to be showing you that I think has this in it. And um, it just seemed to really go with the theme of the soul, which is why Russian literature is assigned in senior year in Waldorf schools. So now I'm going to open up the two boxes and I've been waiting to open to show you guys. Some are related to what we've been talking about, some are not. Um, so we have Black Beauty. Uh, I've been wanting to read this with my students for a while. And then one of my friends who runs a book club just had an amazing, um, they went to a horse stall or a horse um I don't know what it's called, Stables, um, and I they read this book and went there, and I thought that was so cool, but I just really couldn't get myself together um, in time, so I ordered this copy of this book. Actually, my husband got it for me. Um, it has, these are the original illustrations from, I think it's 1913, let's see if it says, uh, let's see. You could imagine if this was like pasted on. That's how they used to make these books. Uh, text is taken from the 1911 American edition. Cover and illustrations are from the 1913 edition. So this is a special version and it's um, hardcover in case you couldn't tell. So I'm looking forward to adding this into next year, which if you've seen my fifth grade video, we've got a couple of different horse books in there. So that's exciting. And... Uh, next we have, and so if you're new to my channel, um, we sometimes use, we get Amazon credit for, um, paying our American Express off. So I've been saving some credit to get these things. Um, this book I'm particularly excited about. I had been looking at a couple of different mythology books relating to Egypt for next year, um, but they, they were kind of, it was inconclusive what was in them or what quality they were. This one's by DK, who, you know, tends to be reliable. Um, and also there were pictures, images of the inside. So I'll just show you guys this. Um, this will be for my fifth grader and second grader. It kind of reminded me of the D.L. Lair books in terms of the layout and the way how there's one section um, per... This is the introduction. Oh, this is actually a little bit different than what I was expecting, but let's look at the table of contents. So there's these different parts. Oh, it is kind of what I was saying. So it's kind of like the D.L. Lair books, but it's more analyzed, I guess. And so anyway, this is the book I got. It's kind of more of an encyclopedia than I was expecting, but that's consistent with DK. Um, but I just thought we could really use this and get more in-depth um, study 
of the Ramayana. And these are different art pieces, I believe, from India. And there were like a lot of books written for adults, so I was struggling to find something that was like more for a younger audience. So I don't know how I'm going to use this, um, but I thought it was cool. And this was probably the biggest splurge. I think it was like $25 for this. So anyway, um, that's the illustrated Ramayana, which is covered in fifth grade uh, in Waldorf schools, I believe. And then we have Paradise Lost. This is the version that um, the CMEC assigned, uh, the Dover Thrift edition, which I actually forgot that I already got this. I was just looking at getting it again. Um, this is from my oldest. And then we have the Egypt game, which is a read aloud I'll be doing with my second and fifth grader next year. I think I read this when I was a kid, but I have no memory of it. Um, I thought that this might just be like a fun read aloud. This is a, um, this book's been around for a while. Let's see when it was originally published. 1967. So Egypt game read aloud. And then the last book, this is actually the one I was most excited about. Um, I've been trying to, like I said, beef up or learn more about the Russian literature that I want to be teaching and assigning. Um, and so I reached out to a professor at a small liberal arts college that teaches a Russian literature class. And I asked her for some direction and she emailed me back and said, this was the text that they use, which I think is for an undergrad class. I'm not sure. Um, so this is how it's organized. And I actually couldn't see any of this on Amazon because uh, I was looking for kind of more context, you know, like aside from just having all of these different Russian literature books, I wanted kind of more of a scaffolding. Um, and so she also told me which pieces they particularly study, but that they use this as like their spine. So this seems pretty consistent in terms of like you read from here and then you read um, the literature itself. So I guess it would be like, okay, we've read this section. Now we're going to go read whatever book. Um, so that's kind of helpful. And then also this will just be from my background knowledge. And there's a lot of background knowledge in the Betty Staley book too, but it's kind of like more bare bones. Um, So anyway, that's the new exciting thing I'm working on. Um, and this stuff, is, as you saw in the box, is all available on Amazon, as of course, sometimes you can get on um, thrift books or whatever site. But I just wanted to make a short video and share with you guys kind of what I'm reading, what I'm thinking about, what I'm working on, and what I'm putting together for next year. So thanks for watching.